is a Bitcoin maximalist. Believing that if you destroy Bitcoin and some other shitcoin is gonna rise to the top is delusional. And this is a Bitcoin realist. There's things that other currencies can do that Bitcoin can't. He's been trading for most of his life. If you think trading is easy, that's the fastest way you will actually get wrecked. While well, he's been hodling since the early days of Bitcoin. I called the 20K Christmas when the price was 4K. They met at Black Show in Singapore for the ultimate crypto showdown. Tone is a terrible trader. Um, I continue to defend Bitcoin uh, against, uh, you know, scammy projects trying to overtake Bitcoin. You're watching one of them written on the shirt right there. Everything he just said is false, okay? This is a Cointelegraph Crypto Duel. Hi everyone, I'm Giovanni and today we are here at Block Show with Don Vase and Richard Hart. The rules of the duel are number one, participants have one minute to reply. Number two, at the end of the duel, you choose the winner. And number three, there are no other rules. So grab some popcorn because things are about to get spicy. Round one, Bitcoin price analysis. What's your reading of the current situation in the Bitcoin market? Um, I couldn't ex I couldn't really explain the big run up to 14,000. In hindsight, I underestimated how little exodus out of shit coins it takes to really pump the price of Bitcoin because it's so illiquid on the exchanges. And uh, for the time being, the exodus out of shit coin has slowed down uh, and therefore the price of Bitcoin is correcting back down. I haven't seen any new mainstream people entering the space. Uh, and you need new mainstream adoption to rise the price of Bitcoin. I still remain skeptical that uh, the bear market is over. The low might be in, uh, but, uh, but I still think there is some more downside to go this year. All right. Do you, do you also think that the shit coins were responsible for that? No. See, here's what happens. If you used to be able to do technical analysis, you could draw trend lines, you could buy the, the golden 5200 daily, uh, you know, move up. But the game has changed. It's now there's C, there's FA, which is fundamental analysis. There's TA, which is technical analysis. And now we've got CA, which is China analysis. On the daily death cross, 5200 cross, we pumped 40% up on President Xi's good blockchain news. The Asian market responds to news instantly because they are engaged in a way that the West is not. In the West, when President Trump tweets, he, he said bad things about Bitcoin and Tim Mnuchin, the, the head of Treasury Department said that it was a national security issue, that they don't like blockchain. And I expected the price to move down. Instead, the price went up 10 percent. And then the next day it moved down with a delay of lag because the traders in the United States aren't engaged in the same way that Asian traders are. So now if you do if you do price analysis like Tone does and you don't have your ear to the ground in Asia, you're unqualified. Anything to add? I've always been a believer in technical analysis. I don't believe the average person has the resources uh, nor the ability to do fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis is something left to hedge funds, people that can uh, hire a bunch of interns, people that can hire a bunch of analysts. Uh, as an average trader, you use technical analysis. Uh, just because I wasn't able to do a great job uh, in timing the $3,000 low for the big run up to 14,000. It doesn't mean that technical analysis failed. Um, if I paid more attention, if I was trading and not traveling the world, I'm pretty sure I would have done a better job. I still think if you're going to be a retail trader, the only chance you have is to be a good technical analyst. Do you know how easy it is to press buy when the president of China tweets everyone that he loves the blockchain? It's the easiest thing in the world. Do you know how easy it is to buy when you see that the Asian markets are limited up 10% on any stock that even loosely involves the word blockchain? It was the easiest long in the history of longs. It, it was it, any fundamental now, China analysis is the only thing that matters. When real retail people have earned enough money to get back into the market in the West and, and start to play until they get wrecked. Listen, everyone that's trying to make money, you're going to lose money trading, okay? For sure. The reason that you go to Vegas and those giant buildings are built is because it's built on losers. And if you go and you trade, you will be destroyed, you will be wrecked. You do not have any advantage over anyone else in the market. Tone, trade sells, Tone Vase sells an indicator on his website for $800 called the TD Indicator. He sells an indicator called TD because it was invented by a guy named Tom DeMarc. He doesn't pay Tom DeMarc. 
If you want to learn trading, maybe you should learn it from the guy that he's trying to impersonate and actually license the Tom DeMarc product or go to his seminars. Um, sure. Um, if you think trading is easy, that's the fastest way you will actually get wrecked. Uh, the TD indicator, I, I made a couple of changes and basically what you're paying for is you can do it yourself. You can do it for free. Uh, the code is public. Uh, the math is public, I should say. Uh, what you're basically paying for is the code that um, I programmed for uh, TradingView. And uh, you can either code it yourself for TradingView. You can use free versions. They're all out there. I announce it. Hey, you can use a free version. I can't vouch for the accuracy of the math in the free versions. And uh, all you're paying for is the effort that it took me uh, to code up the math that is publicly available. Round two. Bitcoin maximalism versus realism. Richard, you said that you were a Bitcoin maximalist and then you moved to a Bitcoin realist, realist position. Bitcoin Can you explain? Can you explain us? Yeah, the meaning of that. Yeah, it's real simple. Everyone, I got into Bitcoin in 2011 as a miner. I've mined full blocks on my own with no pool, which was a 50 block reward at the time. I invested very heavily in 30. Uh, I helped make the 30 top uh, back in 2011. I, I didn't own a bag of Ethereum. The only reason I came out publicly, I was already coming out publicly to try and prove the world with self-help videos because I'd retired in 2003, long before Bitcoin was invented. I wanted to make an impact in the world. And then I saw that my Bitcoin investment that I had a lot of money in was being overtaken by Ethereum. And I thought, well, I don't own any Ethereum. And it's funny, I, I had to come out and defend Bitcoin because no one else would. So both Tone and I have defended Bitcoin against attackers inside and out. And, and what happens is this project that's been around for 10 years shouldn't have to rely on me to save its ass and do its marketing for it. And there's things that other currencies can do that Bitcoin can't. Ethereum's transactions are more secure than Bitcoin's transactions. If Bitcoin's had two inflation bugs where anyone could print as many free coins as they want. One of them was just recently caught by a Bitcoin Cash developer and, and disclosed honorably. Don, can you defend Bitcoin? Um, I continue to defend Bitcoin uh, against, uh, you know, scammy projects trying to overtake Bitcoin. You're watching one of them written on the shirt right there uh, of Richard Hart. It's We're going to talk about it in a, in, uh, in a bit. Something hacked, so I think you have to do that. Um, if you think Ethereum is more secure than, uh, so Ethereum transactions are more secure than Bitcoin, that is just uh, beyond laughable to me. And it's uh, really, really hilarious. How many inflation bugs has Ethereum had? Zero. How many inflation bugs has Bitcoin had? Two. They printed six billion extra Bitcoin and had to roll the chain back, right? They rolled the chain back once in Ethereum because a hacker stole a bunch of money. And I can tell you that letting hackers steal a bunch of money and keep it isn't exactly honorable and ethical. And if they could roll back the chain again, they would for Gavin Wood, who's got hundreds of millions of dollars locked up in parity and the parity multisig hacks, which is his fault because he misused the blockchain and wrote bad code and the Polkadot hack, but they're not rolling it back for him, the most inside possible guy that could possibly be rolled back for. I would, I would see more likely Binance releasing their private keys publicly and seeing miners fight over that 50 million stolen from them than I would see something bad happen on Ethereum. Round three, limits of Bitcoin. Richard said that Bitcoin is one of the fastest appreciating assets in the human history. And that's actually the only valuable thing about Bitcoin. There is nothing else about Bitcoin which is, which is useful. Uh, Tone, I guess you, you don't agree. No, of course not. Uh, Bitcoin is the only product that is uh, the only cryptocurrency, the only blockchain out there uh, that is actually uh, decentralized, that is actually secure. Uh, the amount of mining that goes into it, the amount of uh, code review and the developers uh, that are coding it. And uh, yes, occasionally there will be bugs found and those bugs will be fixed. Uh, there is absolutely zero. Uh, uh, no one can actually exploit those bugs. Uh, the, uh, the latest inflation bug that was found, it would be totally stupid for anyone to exploit it because um, all value in all blockchains would go to zero. Um, if the value of Bitcoin goes to zero, anything decentralized in a crypto space immediately dies. Uh, because then uh, there's actually people with value in Bitcoin that will never invest um, in any other uh, cryptocurrency. It'll, uh, the, the whole idea of store of value would be gone. You can exploit Litecoin, you can exploit Ethereum because you always have Bitcoin to ex exit into. It doesn't work the same going backwards. You can't exit through a shitcoin. Everything, everything he just said is false, okay? 
He took an argument that works for why miners attack the network less, because then all their mining equipment be worth less. And then he extended it to a place that 100% does not work. If you're a criminal and you don't have any money, and you have the opportunity to steal a shitload of money, you're going to steal that money, okay? Just like we've seen exchanges get hacked over and over and over again, and then they sell that money that they stole. And the system still works after they stole it, right? That everyone's still happy to keep sending their money to the same exchange. It, 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 nothing that he said is accurate. If you steal the money and you hack the money, then people are still going to use Bitcoin. That has absolutely nothing to do with what I said. Uh, the reason why people want to steal Bitcoin is because the protocol is sound and Bitcoin remains valuable. Um, there is uh, actually incentive, some incentive, uh, to 51% attack shit coins. We've seen Verge 51% attacked. We've seen Ethereum Classic 51% attacked. Um, eventually, Litecoin will be 51% attacked as their hash rate continues to go down. Uh, Bcash, uh, it would be 51% attacked if it wasn't set too centralized in order to create checkpoints uh, to, to kind of basically for them to do whatever they want with the code. Uh, the thing is, uh, the you can't really exploit Bitcoin code anymore. Might have done it back in 2010. Uh, with that initial inflation bug because Bitcoin was really irrelevant at the time. Uh, but now you wouldn't do it because you destroy value. You won't be able to profit from that. Anything to I, add? I assure you that the hackers that don't hold that much Bitcoin, which is why in their business of stealing it instead of just watching it appreciate and living on an island, they don't give a shit if they're the first person to sell it. They're the first person to do the hack. They could open shorts before they do the hack and then they could make money on their shorts and on the money that they just stole. Further, they can't. Uh, you can't make money on a short. Uh, if you short, let's say, Litecoin, and then you uh, go, uh, if you, if you do it with Litecoin, you can't, if you short Bitcoin, your rewards are in the form of Bitcoin. No, so if you not. short Bitcoin, the CME, um, the f CME is cash settled, and it's you, you can sell cash settled CME. Not everything is BitMEX, not everything settles in fiat, not everything settles in the shit coin or illiquid crypto, right? The, the founder of XRP was the richest guy in the world. Now he's not. Why? Because he had illiquidity, right? The CME is not running out of money. You can short as much on the CME as you could possibly want. And there's other cash settled futures products like uh, Backed, which is releasing options soon even. Like it, it, you could also do Quantos and trade in another coin that didn't get hacked. So I could, everything he's saying is false. Sure. You can short in the CME. They're starting to get a little bit of volume. Everyone always trades in the crypto space. And uh, if you destroy Bitcoin, great. You just prevented me from wasting my next five years. I can move on to another profession. The point is believing that if you destroy Bitcoin and some other shit coin is going to rise to the top is delusional. Tone is a terrible trader. Okay, He called the Bitcoin top at 7,000 and it went to 20,000. He has a good excuse for it, right? The easiest long in the entire world when President G said nice things about crypto, he missed because instead of trading and making money, which he pretends to be good at, he's teaching people, selling them a copy of Tom DeMarc's indicator that he did barely anything to for $800 on his website. It's really $850, but I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. He sells you dinner with him for $250 because he can't make enough money trading to be able to eat dinner with you for free, okay? He sells for uh, $850 for his trading course, $450 for his stupid indicator that he copied off Tom DeMarc. And by the way, he tells you, you can't use it safely unless you get my education. And all he's going to tell you to do is wait for the next candle to wait for confirmation. Because that's what Tom DeMarc says in his book. All right. He's a terrible trader. He has a terrible... Uh, if you counter trade him, you're going to make more money. Now, what does he do to try and hide the fact he's a terrible trader? He says shit coins suck. Right. And it's been a wonderful position to say shit coins suck because they do. Right. But that doesn't mean he's good at trading. It doesn't mean you should give him money. Uh, you don't have to give me money. I don't scam people. I offer services and uh, if you want to pay for them, you pay for them. If you don't want to pay for them, you don't have to pay for them. Uh, at least I'm not printing fake money and giving it away and getting rich on the back end of it. Round four. Is Richard Hart launching a shitcoin? Richard, you are about to launch yes. your own cryptocurrency Correct. this month, which is Hex. Yes which is, as far as I understand, is uh, um, a certificate. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a certificate of deposit on the blockchain, which can be used to earn interest. Yes. So, Tone, you, you define Hex, uh, Richard's uh, upcoming uh, project, um, a shitcoin. So why do you think it's a shitcoin? Uh, he created it out of thin air. He's basically selling you monopoly money and uh, he has a shit ton of it. And if he gives enough of it away and he convinces people to promote it and uh, pays a bunch of 
trolls and sock puppets to leave comments all over uh, the internet uh, promoting uh, this uh, this monopoly money he gave away. He gets to make a lot of money on the back end because he's probably holding the majority of it. Okay. Can you so, can you defend it? So while Tone pretends to be able to predict price and pretends to be good at things so that he charges you for them. I charge you for nothing. I offer better price calls than he does, and I offer better performance than he does. And I don't delete my calls, he may not either, so just go and look them up historically. I called the 20K Christmas when the price was 4K. I called short at 19K. You can go verify this. He was wrecked the entire way, okay? Now, about giving people money. You can give him money on your credit card, on your, on your PayPal, on your Bitcoin, anyway, because he's broke and he needs your money. I don't need your money, I retired in 2003. I give you free price calls, free chat, now free tokens, free self-help books. You can't pay me money, you don't know my Bitcoin address. You can't pay me credit card, I don't have any shopping cart where you could possibly pay me. So to be called a scammer by this guy that will do anything he can to make money, when I do everything for free as a retired serial entrepreneur, is absurd to me. Now, while he talks about crypto and pretends he knows what it's about, I'm actually building it. I'm actually designing it. When I first got into Bitcoin, it was free and I mined it for free. And that's why I went all in on it after I got it for free. Now, the only people that are getting freemium onboarding is Ravencoin and Ethereum and Monero because you can mine it for free. And Hex. Don, any replies? Um, if he had any money left, he wouldn't be printing money, right? So my guess is uh, he went broke a little while ago, probably due to terrible trading. And now he has resorted uh, to printing his own money and uh, promoting it so he can get rich on the money that he's printing. Uh, uh, what I do is I travel the world and I teach people how to trade. If you don't want to pay to learn how to trade, you can learn it for free. That's all it is. Can you imagine the tragedy? of paying him to learn how to lose all your money. When you could lose all your money on your own, naturally. I give better price calls than him for free, period. Furthermore, Bitcoin cannot do time-locked interest. You can lock your coins in Bitcoin, you receive no rewards. If you wanna replace the CD, which has $7.2 trillion in the United States and China, someone has to build it. I built it, it's open source, I give it for free to Bitcoin holders. We have two security audits from two different companies and one economics audit. And one of the auditors is tied for top best auditor in the world for solidity contracts. This guy cosplays and talks about crypto, but when someone actually tries to make the world a better place and tries to give you something for free and try and let you buy a new thing that could go very high when Bitcoin's already 10,000, you're buying my bags I bought for 30. The people who get rich in Bitcoin are three people. Shills, who make money selling you stuff with no risk. People that enable the shills, margin trading places, of which I told you my link earlier, right? And Koken founders. Don, you really don't think that uh, this new cryptocurrency can help Bitcoin? So apparently our uh, Richard's solution to the financial problems isn't Bitcoin. It's more free perpetual interest at what? 7% a year, 10% a year? Are you at, are you at BitConnex rates of 1% a day yet? When are you, getting the, when are you gonna do that? When are, you gonna, when are you gonna offer people 1% uh, interest a day? Bitcoin miners get paid to push the price down because that's the security model. Every single Bitcoin that exists, the 18 million coins that exist now, nobody that did anything honorable or ethical was given those coins. The developers were not given those coins. The people that marketed were not given those coins. The only people that received those coins were people that sold them on market to pollute the environment by buying electricity. Now that's necessary because that's a security model. But I can get the same security for pennies on Ethereum without paying a million dollars an hour to miners that then use that money to attack that network with a fake Bitcoin and try and convince people to buy a fake Bitcoin, which is what Bitmain did, okay? having a free currency that doesn't overpay miners and is based on staking. So we're a proof of work hybrid. Our inflation rewards are based on proof of stake. You locked up your coins, but our transactions are proof of work because that's the only thing that's safe. So you really think that proof of work is uh, fail failable? No, it's, it, is, it is an extremely expensive and reliable and trustful thing. It's the best thing that we have, but it is terrible. And it, it's terrible for the environment. I hope we find something better. We don't have anything better yet. So we do use proof of work for our transactions. Here, here's the important point. If you want the world to be a better place, you have to remove, you have to replace all of traditional finance with open source, peer-to-peer, -peer, trusted systems. I built such a system. He did not build such a system and Bitcoin didn't build such a system or would have more than the 2.8 million users total that have $1,000 in a wallet. That is absolutely pitiful adoption. And the only way you're gonna get more adoption is if someone has the margin to advertise into the public, to onboard new users like the Ponzi schemes are doing. 
The Ponzi schemes have referral programs. The Ponzi schemes print you interest, and we're doing the same thing. Now, he thinks we'll be high inflation. And during the first year, we are because we reward people so much. We're going from no supply to lots of supply. But after that year is over, the inflation is only 3.69%, which is lower than Bitcoin has ever been. Furthermore, there's no externalities paying miners. All of our inflation only goes to the stakers. So if you're an average length, average size staker, there's no inflation to you because you're the one getting all the coins. So we are built to do everything Bitcoin does better than it ever did. Can you guys please like loop the part on a coin telegraph video over and over when Richard said Ponzi schemes give you free interest and we give you free interest. Just loop that over and over and over and over. You know nice suggest. <laughs> you know who else gets free interest? Bitcoin inflates higher than 3.8% every single year since it's ever existed as a free dividend to people who pollute the environment. So Bitcoin pays interest not to people that invest in Bitcoin, but to people that send money to weird countries to, to make silicone, to burn electricity, to, to pollute the environment. That's who actually makes all the Bitcoin. Every Bitcoin you've ever bought went through one of their hands first. And I used to do it. I used to mine full blocks on my own, 50 block reward with no pull on a 5970 GPU. And now I, I got in for free and then all in, and now no one else can get in for free. You guys all have to buy my bags that I got for 30 for 10,000. Sorry, guys. Round five. What is China's influence on Bitcoin? China embracing blockchain technology. What do you think, guys? Is it a good thing for Bitcoin or a bad thing for Bitcoin? A lot of people are saying that this uh, China dealing with blockchain can actually uh, impose a kind of authoritarian turn to the whole uh, environment of blockchain and cryptocurrency? Uh, it's really irrelevant for Bitcoin. Bitcoin will continue to grow and people will continue to adopt it. Uh, it's really irrelevant to me what China thinks a blockchain is or isn't. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, less people use Bitcoin today is because of people like Richard Hart promoting Ethereum all over the place and probably Ripple and all other shit coins until he started doing his own. I don't own any Ethereum. I've never owned more than $100 of Ethereum in my entire life. I've never owned any XRP in my entire life. I was a Bitcoin maximalist forever. But then you, when you decide you want anonymity, you can't do it in Bitcoin. When you decide you want to replace the CD, you can't do it in Bitcoin. When you decide you want interesting game theory to reward people for doing awesome and honorable things, you cannot do it in Bitcoin because they only inflate to pay people to pay and pollute the environment. That's the only people they pay. They could, the, the, you know how much better Bitcoin be if you could actually pay the developers to make some improvements? You know the last improvement you got Bitcoin? Two years ago, you got SegWit, which we lied and cheated and stealed. And I was part of the lying and cheating and stealing to get SegWit, to get uh, uh, Lightning, which by the way, had critical vulnerabilities and lost people's money, which only has 50% more Bitcoin in it than wrapped Bitcoin with BitGo as a counterparty on Ethereum. Right? Ethereum's got DeFi. Ethereum's got a distributed stablecoin, which has does more volume. Stablecoins do more volume than Bitcoin and all other cryptocurrencies. People really want stablecoins, and you can't get one on Bitcoin without a counterparty. Tone, are you not uh, worried about the environmental impact? No, not at all. Uh, I'm not. It's. Uh, I mean, what uh, what advantage to the world do playing video games brings? And like, think nothing. And th think about how much electricity is wasted every year. Uh, by people playing video games and compare that to Bitcoin mining, it would absolutely dwarf it. Uh, so uh, that, that part is completely irrelevant to me. Um, as far as Ethereum, uh, the founders of Ethereum have already admitted that it's an unscalable platform. And for stable coins on top of Bitcoin, Tether has already moved over to the liquid sidechain. So I have no idea what Richard's talking about. Once again, everything Tone is saying is wrong, okay? The majority of Tether volume trading is done on ERC-20 tokens. They used to do it on Omni, which used to be on Bitcoin, but it sucked so bad because it was slow and expensive that they moved the majority of Tether trading onto ERC-20 tokens, which, believe it or not, Hex is also an ERC-20 token, as TRX was, as BNB was, as, uh, like, there's four or five billion dollar companies that are ERC-20 tokens, right? So if you, if you don't think China is important, you must be crazy. If you don't understand how wasteful Bitcoin is and you want it to secure all the world's value, the energy burnt has to be proportional to the value to defend it. And so if you're promoting Bitcoin, trying to make it take over trillions of dollars of value from the world, you've got to burn trillions of dollars of electricity to f***ing secure it. So saying that right now it uses less than video games doesn't make any sense because you want it to be big and you want it to burn more electricity. Furthermore, those guys in Ethereum, Ethereum's got something called uh, optimistic roll-ups right now using ZK Starks, which could 100x a throughput on the chain because the Ethereum developers now are smarter than the Bitcoin developers. Bitcoin developers did two or three good things recently. Schnorr signatures, go ahead. I keep going. Oh, 
like imagine a, a future world where everybody is using Bitcoin, like the pollution will grow accordingly, no? Bitcoin can actually scale. Uh, try to download an Ethereum node. Good luck with that. No one needs a full node. No one runs a full node in Bitcoin. Let me tell you about Tone, right? Tone thinks he's smart, right? Tone thinks he's smart because he runs a full node. Do you know what kind of full node he runs? Ones where you double click the EXE and he uses the default settings. And when you use the default settings, you're just a bitch to the guy that set the default. He doesn't compile the source code. He doesn't verify that it doesn't have hacks in it. If he did, we could blame him for those inflation bugs that he didn't catch, right? But he thinks he's smart because he runs a nine mining node. If you run a nine mining node and the network decides, the mining network decides to do something else like stop removing the happening and pay themselves whatever they want, he could create his own fork that no one's on and if no one likes his fork, they could 51% attack his fork. Now, the UASP, the No2X guys, threatened the network and put a gun to the network's head to get SegWit. And I was part of that and I supported it. But in the end, the miners are the actual network. And if you're not mining, you're a bitch. Uh, yeah, the miners lost. Uh, it was users like myself that won uh, with our non-mining nodes deciding what Bitcoin really is. And uh, no, I have my... Um, uh, we're, we're building a server right now to run all my websites and that's going to be uh, a full node by someone that really understands the system and uh, better than me, And uh, but it will be a node controlled by me. Round six, effects of the Bitcoin halving. Next year there will be the Bitcoin halving. So what's the outcome of this halving according to you? Uh, we will see a spike in price or you're not so optimistic about it? Do you think it's already priced in? What do you think? So I, I think that we had a 20K top at the end of 2017 and we've only gone up to 14K on a Ponzi scheme, which means we're not front running it. It's not overbought. We don't have high premiums anywhere. We've got choppy sideways volatility with a lot of news inputs. So I think that the reduction in the, in the future supply will drive the price up because I don't think that we're overbought at this point. Um, you know, I think that they think if you believe in supply and demand and that you believe the demand is static or increasing, then reducing the supply hitting the market is obviously going to influence the price upwards. So I'm, I'm bullish on Bitcoin and especially because of China. Now, China will say something bad about Bitcoin and it will push the price again. And they always do this. So be ready for it. They're going to say blockchain, not Bitcoin. And they're going to say something very bad about Bitcoin. It's just a question of how long they wait. Do you agree? Uh, I'm a technical analyst uh, right now. To me, uh, Bitcoin has been on a downtrend since the $14,000 top this summer. Um, until it proves to me that it's ready to tackle new highs past 14,000, I'm going to remain bearish in the environment. I am looking for uh, another low, uh, not as low as 3,000, uh, but probably something lower than seven. If it doesn't come before the halving, then the $7,200 low is in. I let the price prove it to me. Uh, right now, I am looking for a low around the five, six thousand dollar area before the halving. Uh, and then finally, the bull market for me could begin. Um, if not, if we stagnate here in the eight, nine thousand dollar range going into the halving, uh, then I'll be a bull above ten thousand whenever it starts moving in that direction. Round seven, year end price predictions. One more question for you guys. So now I'm going to ask you what's your price prediction for the end of the year? And then at the end of the year, we're going to check who among you got closer to that prediction. Okay. 11,000. Uh, seven and a half to eight thousand. I, I am this number directly out of my ass. So this is like, I would have absolutely no certainty in this number, but I'm more bullish than bearish and it, and it wouldn't be making a new high. Like, so I'm, I'm okay with the middle ground of like chopping around. 11K seems fine. I wouldn't trade it. Listen, don't trade. You're gonna lose all your money. If you're, if you're forced to and you can't take my good advice, go to richardhart.win and smash that buy and sell button as many times as you can and rack up all the fees you can, but you really shouldn't trade. Go on. Uh, I'm more bearish than bullish at the moment. Uh, for the year end, I'm more bearish than bullish. Uh, but trading isn't about you know the best prediction. Trading is about risk management, setting the right stop losses, and uh, having good money management. Uh, that's what will keep you so well, that's what will keep you alive in trading. No, nope. total bullshit, total lie. Every single guy that wants to sell you on this idea that he can predict what's going to happen, which if he really could, he wouldn't be wasting his time out here. He'd be on a fucking island somewhere, right? Um, if, if, if you think that risk management can make up for bad trades, you're hundred percent wrong because all your stops will get hit. If you think a stop loss will save you, your stops will be run and you'll be chopped up 50 times until you're finally out of the game. You will not make up for bad trading with stop losses. You will not make up for bad trading with cash management. And let me tell you more about cash management than he'll ever tell you, okay? 
go ahead and Google the, uh, oh, what's the dude's name? Theoretically, mathematically proven, if you bet 100% of your stack when you're 100% of certain, 50% of your stack when you're 50% certain, and 30% of your stack when you're 30% certain, if you match your bet size to your certainty size, it's proven game theoretically the best cash management that exists. He doesn't even teach you that shit, right? Like it, everyone that pretends to teach you something appeals to cash management or, or risk management, but really it just means you predicted the price properly. It, it's, it's, it's a joke. It's, it's, it's a euphemism. It's a platitude. All right, Tom, do you have an, one last comment? Yeah, betting 100% of your stack when you're 100% certain is the fastest way to get wrecked and never trade again. Uh, good luck with that strategy. That was a great discussion, guys. So, Tom Vays and Richard Hart, thanks a lot for being with us. Thank you guys for watching and uh, put your comments below deciding who won today's crypto duel. Tom Vays or Richard Hart? Cointelegraph, like, subscribe, and hodl.